Tonight on Intimate Portrait. I was called plain and unattractive and untalented. She began her extraordinary life in the shadows. Daughter of a legend. Cut. Girlfriend of a superstar. I fell in love with him from the moment he opened the door. But with single-minded determination, she stepped into her own spotlight with the grace and style that can only define Angelica Houston. She always had that class thing going for her. No one had any idea how far she could go because she could go anywhere. Always a survivor, Angelica talks openly for the first time about coping with the end of her woman who has found her way. Life's been good to me. Angelica Houston, out of the shadows and into the light. I'm Lauren Bacall with an intimate portrait, next. Angelica Houston was born in 1951, a true Hollywood blue blood. Her legendary father, John Houston, was the director of such classics as the Maltese Falcon and the Treasure of the Sierra Madre. At the time of Angelica's birth, he was in the Belgian Congo making the African Queen. I was on the set visiting my husband, Humphrey Bogart, when Angelica's father got the telegram. He put it in his pocket, and finally, um, Lauren Bacall said, for God's sakes, John, tell us, tell us what it says, because I was, I was imminent. And, um, and he said, it's Angelica with a J. Angelica's mother, Enrica Soma, was a dancer with the New York City Ballet, and graced the cover of Life magazine at 17. Her beauty caught the attention of producer David Selznick, who offered Ricky a contract at a Hollywood studio. But before her movie career could begin, the 20-year-old gave it up to become John Houston's fourth wife and a mother. When she was two, Angelica entered the magical land of leprechauns, fairies, and blarney. Disillusioned with living in Hollywood, her father moved the family to Ireland, where he could play country squire on a 110-acre estate known as St. Clarence. He liked wild places, faraway places. He liked adventure. He, d he didn't like to live safe. He didn't like a, a middle class or a bungalow existence. My father was always either in, in shacks or in palaces. I could never imagine him in the, in the middle road. At St. Clarence, Angelica and her older brother Tony were isolated from the real world. She had few friends, but a lively imagination, and already had a penchant for acting. Angelica loved playing dress-up, and her favorite game, wedding. Veils, to me, symbolized Romance, beauty, mystery. I liked anything in a veil. I remember saying to my father when I was about six that I wanted to be a nun. Uh, and he said, that's great, honey. When are you going to start? At the center of Angelica's universe was her mother, and Angelica idolized her. She liked to have fun. She was more like a girlfriend to me, really, than parental figure. She would take us out of school to go to a, a great exhibition at a gallery. It was always very exciting to be around my mother. She always had plans. Angelica's father was often away filming. The rare times he was home, the estate came to life with both friends and treasures he collected from exotic locations. He was extravagant. He came back from the barbarian and the geisha with kimonos for all of us, and we all wore kimonos for the rest of that summer. But as carefree and bright as things appeared on the surface, 
When she got older, Angelica realized her parents' relationship had a dark side. They lived in separate dwellings on the estate. Her father occupied the large main house, and back in the woods, her mother stayed in a smaller place with the children. Although these houses were separated by some 200 or 300 yards, um, there, there was more to that division, I, I think, than meets the eye. John Houston was known for his roving eye and less than discreet affairs, and Angelica was often introduced to other women he brought to the estate. At the age of 12, she discovered her father had a two-year-old son with one of those women. And he sat us down and said, I have wonderful news, you have a little brother, which was um, somewhat shocking at the time. Angelica's half-brother Danny eventually became the little boy she protected. And Danny held his big sister in awe. I remember this uh, sort of rather Irish, possibly savage, uh, dark-haired uh, beauty um, against this green Irish landscape. Riding with her father on their Irish estate, Angelica grew to love adventure and wide open spaces easily. I think it was very important to her to have dad's approval because uh, in a sense not only was he a father to us but also almost a, a god. John Houston could be critical, demanding and even cruel but he taught Angelica the tough lessons of survival that would last her whole life. You just kind of had to prove yourself to my father and he liked courage. If you fell off the horse, you got back up. And that could go on for, you know, days. And as often as you'd fall off, <laughs> as often as you would have to get back up. Angelica's ability to rise after a blow was truly tested when her parents decided to separate. Ricky moved to London, and Angelica was uprooted from the Irish countryside she loved to start a whole new life in the city. I hated the first years in London with a passion. I hated the concrete. I hated the weather. It was a really unhappy experience, and I cried every day. It was like a world falling apart. My parents never really discussed their separation with us. and. I guess it's still my policy that if you don't ask questions, you won't get lies, or worse, the truth. But Angelica was a survivor. She adapted to her new life and transformed herself from young Irish lass to a rebellious teen of the 60s. I wore a lot of pancake makeup and, and yes, fishnet stockings, a lot of black lines around my eyes. My father was horrified. I got into trouble with him when I went home to Ireland on holidays. I remember when my sister was looking perfectly okay and absolutely lovely and innocent, and uh, and Dad would give her one of those one of those looks where 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 maybe she was being a little bit too um, expressive in her attire. Measuring up to her father was not the only challenge. Angelica was not motivated in school, and it was a disinterest in the classroom that led to her stardom. Very early on, uh, I decided I wanted to be an actress. It was probably the realization that I'd probably never be all that much good at anything else um, because I was not scholastically inclined. At 16, Angelica was just a breath away from embracing every actor's fantasy. World-renowned director Franco Zeffirelli approached her about starring in Romeo and Juliet. The part that would make Olivia Hussey an overnight sensation might have been hers. My father, however, had decided at that point that he was going to give me my start. He wrote a letter to Zeffirelli to say that he no longer wanted me to be considered for that part, that it, I was going to make a movie with him. Angelica's launching was the complicated medieval love story, A Walk with Love and Death. Her and I love you and I want to be with you all my life. The teenager struggled under the critical eye of the man who was both father and director. Cut. Cut! Oh, dear. You forgot entirely. 